Welcome to the broadcast. Our sign language interpreter is Maresha Owiti. And the Kenyan nation waited in anticipation the whole day today for what was expected to be white smoke from the mediation talks to end the doctor's strike, but no good news came. The mediation team, led by the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, met with union officials to agree on the report to be presented to court tomorrow as yet another window for striking a deal closes. Rita Tinina begins our broadcast tonight. Still meets. It's unfortunate we have not reached a point where we can say we have concluded our discussion. Hardline positions. And as we speak, no more talks. The strike continues. Appeals. Tuwe watu ambao watakuwa na huruma na maisha ya wanainchi. Accusations of failure. The sooner that the government gets its act together and comes up with a, a package that is acceptable, the better for us. Admission of failure from unlikely quarters. Ukiona ile kitu na ingilia kusunduisha ni shindwe, wajaluo na isama entiegi moro. Loss of lives, suffering of patients to a jail term for doctors' union officials, intrigues that have characterized the doctors' strike as they press for the implementation of a 2013 collective bargaining agreement. And it appears there is still no end in sight to the doctors' pay dispute. For close to three months, parties have engaged in negotiations over the doctors' pay dispute, Talks which have collapsed on several occasions as union officials battled a contempt of court case for failure to call off the strike. The Parties in the dispute are back in court on Thursday after failing to meet a one-week deadline by the Court of Appeal to engage in negotiations and reach a consensus. The second time that mediators, the Law Society of Kenya, and the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights are failing to meet a deadline set by the appeals court. But even before parties went to the Court of Appeal and before the LSK and the KNCHR intervened, the Employment and Labor Relations Court had granted the parties not one, not two, but three chances in close to a month to conclude negotiations. They failed to meet all of them, leading to the jailing of seven union officials. Hey, if you're angry and you know say CBA, CBA! If you're angry with another deadlock, parties may slowly be exhausting the options in the longest strike by doctors in the country as the pain and suffering of hundreds of patients in dire need of medical services continues. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Rita Tinina for us tonight, thank you. Now tonight there is growing concern of rising insecurity in parts of northern Kenya and the Rift Valley. The search for diminishing pressure for partialists is threatening the lives, property, and the tourism industry of Laikipia County. So far, six people have been killed and several maimed. Getty News senior investigative, investigative, investigative reporter Dennis Onsarigo has been in the county of Laikipia. Here's an investigative piece on the Savannah Scramble. Nambaka saa hizi ni simba moja huwa tunapata ambaye ni kola na ikona watuwa wili. Out of the pride ya that ambaye na kuanga hapa hivi. I would say that the situation is under control. Located on the equator. Like Kipi, which loosely translates to a treeless plain in the Maasai language, is among the least populated counties in the country. But considered one of the highest contributors to the country's foreign exchange earnings, 
Lake, sitting on nearly 9,000 square kilometers, like Kipia, has in the recent past been rocked by rising insecurity that has shaken the semi arid and savanna plains in Kenya's Great Rift Valley. When raiders invaded ranches in search of water and pasture for their starving animals, the heavily armed herders left behind wanton destruction of lives and property. The biggest statement being the shooting of the area local police boss. Like Kipia County is now at the center of a prolonged conflict, pitting residents against the provincial administration and the wildlife conservancies that straddle the county that thrives on pastoralism, tourism, ranching, and horticultural farming. From the air, thousands of livestock have been driven past high end electric fences where hundreds of wild animals have called home for decades. The herders are fighting over pasture and water. The outcome has been a deadly clash of guns, bullets, and tears. The first killing at this homestead in the outskirts of Romoroti town. Armed raiders gunned down William Kariwa Lotome, a father of eight, one morning inside the ranch. This was four months ago. <laughs> The killing at the time treated as an isolated incident would later turn into six other killings as herders got bolder, raided more farms, driving their animals to the heart of the wildlife conservancies. <laughs> His children, eight of them, are now staring at a bleak future. The shed where the family had several cows is empty. The widow is stuck between feeding her family and educating them. Mary is rocking her eight-day-old baby. The baby, the community says, is yet to be given a name, was born inside the space here, occupied by the mother. The manyata, the mother had called home, was torched, allegedly, by security forces. Mary has been a victim of a group of ruthless administration police officers deployed to Rumuruti town where tensions have been escalating. <laughs> Mary says all her earthly belongings were burnt to ashes. For the last eight days, she has been sleeping out in the cold with the infant. The only garment for the baby is a piece of cloth she managed to escape with. Five kilometers away, ten other houses were burned down by heavily armed police officers. The herders here insisting security forces are targeting the wrong people. Those who have illegally invaded ranches here are still roaming the land. Indeed. Most of the housing structures burnt here are not inside the protected wildlife conservancies. 
some huge tracts of land, such as this Agricultural Development Corporation land, now in the hands of powerful government officials, have remained undisturbed. Why are security agencies burning down houses of others, some of whom have occupied their current housing structures for so long? The problem with uh, the, the locals who have put illegal structures on those uh, corridors where animals move from one farm to another. So there have been also an, 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 um, there have been an obstacle to the animal, free, uh, free movement of the animal from one ranch to another ranch. So those are the people which we destroyed the structures. Uh, we have given them uh, a lot of notices to leave those places, but they become adamant. So we are forcibly to push them out. Otherwise, we have not evicted somebody from his own legal farm. Hi. The lead has delved into the alarming turn of events in Laikipia County. The conflict pitting communities here and large scale land owners is far from over and stretches back decades. Local senior government officials charged that the latest incursion into ranches is an act of aggression fueled by politicians ahead of the August general election. Most passes of land here have had their leases expire. Politicians are exploiting the development for political gain. The lead has obtained an audio clip where like keep your North Member of Parliament, Matthew Lembukel, is heard rallying communities that reside here to rise up and do what he calls defending their land. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's our birthright. Mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. I'm not a bagel girl waiting. Kaji de Kipo, I'm a day in Potasamburu, Kaji Kipo. I get over a girl to another and get Jacare, Marankai, Metem and Yungu Balagi. Not a and and the local police department says the member of parliament is under watch for such utterances that continue to escalate the standoff between large scale landowners and the others. The lead got in touch with the member of parliament but he declined to meet us despite promising to do so several times. The herders are sparing nothing in their quest to find grazing land for their animals in what appears as a lawless county in the hands of others, now turned armed bandits. Stephen Lumero told the lead he came face to face with a group of armed herders who had invaded his farm. <laughs> Lumero had part of his leg amputated, but several months later, the pain from the gunshot injury suffered still haunts him. Lumero 
Lumero moved from his village to this village in Rumuruti town where he has been recuperating. The middle-aged man says no one has been held accountable for his shooting. <laughs> The brazen raids of ranches by armed herders has left a trail of destruction, the touching of a ranch in the heart of Laikipia County, and the total blockade of another by armed raiders, are security agents worried. There is more. Now this is a Korean camp at the heart of Muge Ranch, the second largest in Laikipia County, and staff here have been sent parking for the last 60 days now. They had more than 200 confirmations of tourists who were supposed to be here, but because of the rising cases of insecurity, the camp has remained closed. I'm told another camp up that direction has also been closed because of these rising cases. It is not clear how long this is likely to take, but this is having a toll order, not only on the locals here, but the tourism industry in this part of the country. Tucked away in the heart of the biggest ranch in Laikipi is a tourist lodge that has now turned into a monument of sorts. The last time tourists arrived here was last year. The numbers have dropped to near zero. To my funga camp, um, Bakata, Mibidi, some of the staffs were to Wameena Manyumbani, Kosubabu Akuna Kazi. To my corner bookings for the last two months, I'm going to booking full camps na kwa saa hizi walikanzo wote so kwa saa hizi hakuna kazi mpaka imebidi watu wengine waende nyumbani Joseph told the lead wildlife numbers have decreased and in their place livestock numbers have swollen decimating the ever dwindling pasture in the face of a continuing drought na mpaka saa hizi ni simba moja huwa tunapata ambaye ni kola na iko na watoto wawili out of the pride ya that ambaye inakuanga hapa hivi we have never seen them. Thank you. The lodge that has a staff of 19 employees has scaled down its number to a paltry nine. The future is uncertain for those who used to work here, but have since been told to stay at home until things look up. The invasion of the ranches by herders has been blamed on the drought that has hit part of Samburu County. But some residents insist there is a hidden hand in the clashes. What wengi hapa ni squatters, ambao naishi hapa, wengi wana mashamba, kwa sababu hata ukiangali mashamba, ya hii semu ambayo naito karuwao. Ni vile tu kuna mission hapa ya Catholic iliongea na watu wa hapa watafute pesa kidogo na hii mission ikaongeza wakapatiwa ika moja moja katika sehemu hii like pia kuna squatters wengi sana ambao wanaishi hapa na pia kuna mashamba mengi ambayo imekuwa ya, ya shirika kama Gema na wenyewe wako upande wa Central lakini hawaishi hapa ina create hiyo nafasi ya kwamba hata watu kutoka Samburu County, kutoka Isiolo County wakiona ardhi ambayo ni idle lazima walete mifugo zao pale. Kwa hivyo pia inaleta mambo ya conflict katika sehemu hii. Most of the land here has remained unused with the ranchers and herders drawn for the Samburu to Rukan and Pokot areas. Communities that have not seen eye to eye for decades now caught up in a tussle that gets more confusing by the day. Mugi Ranch, that sits on more than 60,000 acres of land, has seen one of the largest invasions by armed herders in search of water and pasture. The invasion has left a trail of death and destruction. At the heart of the ranch, the lead catches up with this young man, Leyekule Kempe. In the company of his father, this young man has been on the road for several days in search of grass and water. Drought, hunger is driving them down into Laikipia, a county now weighed down by thousands of animals. 
But at the heart of the ranch, dozens of animal carcasses litter the once attractive and much sought after tourist destinations. The latest killing was that of an elephant this past one week. A younger one was gunned down inside the ranch two weeks ago. The animals are now rotting away, with the stench spreading through the once beautiful landscape. When the lead got here, we were met by a dead buffalo shot by arrows. A tour guide told us the herders have now changed strategy. They have abandoned guns for poisoned arrows. The sound of gunshots is giving away their location. Solomon Epukor has been around since the first incursion by the herders into the expansive ranch. Solomon says the number of wildlife killed is not only alarming but rising by the day. Kwa rekodi yangu ile nyati mimi mwenyewe nimeona kwa ground ni nyati 13. Nyati 13 imekufa. Ndio fu kumi simekufa so far ile nimeona. Alafu zebra ni zebra ni wengi sana. Lakini ile idadi so far tumia approach ile tumepata na bado sinaongezeka ni kama na 8 to 10. Ndio ile tumepata kakas. Alafu Tuiga nao bado ni wengi. Tuiga ni wengi sana wale wamekufa. Alafu pundamilia, alafu tunaita suruwai pia bado wamekufa kwa wengi sana. Traditionally herders have grazed their livestock alongside wild animals with minimal human life conflict. The killing of elephants, a dwindling population for the family of the big five, is raising eyebrows. There are more than herders in the ranches. Sabu tumekua wabore na pokot pande ingine. Samburu pande ingine au tulikana kwa pande hizo zingine. So ile kitu imetusaidia saidi ni dialogue. Ile tunajaribu kuongea na wao na pia tuko na watu ambao wa community ambao wameajiriwa kazi hapa. So ile kitu wanafanya ni kwenda pale kuongea na hii watu, washeni madhara mnafanya kama ni nyasi. Nyasi ndio yuko ndani nyasi. Watu waache kuharibu fitu za kampuni na watu waache kuwa wanyamapori. Dialogue seems to be working but bullet riddled carcasses of elephants and zebras rotting away have raised concerns that tourism industry could be taking a direct hit from the latest conflict. I would say that the situation is under control. We are able to penetrate on areas which were a problem before. Our officers are on the ground very alert and uh, on daily basis we are doing uh, patrols to make sure that there are these animals which have been uh, flushed out of uh, the farms do not come back again. Experts are warning that we are an impending general election around the corner, one that is likely to be politically charged. The search for water and pasture will get nasty. Political temperatures by politicians to gain an edge of their competitors is also set to inflame passions further. <laughs> nafasi ya security yao hata juzi tu hapa hivi eh OSPD anapigwa risasi na ni mfanyikazi wa serikali amekuja hapa kwa sababu tu ya kulinda amani ya watu na ikiwa serikali yenyewe eh OSPD anapigwa risasi na raia wa kawaida atatolewa eh, security yake wapi hundreds of families are still out in the cold the family of Nancy Nakali is living one day at a time the towering figure that was once the father and husband of this home is now buried at the corner of the family land they have occupied for years. For Stephen Lumero, he will have to live with one leg for the rest of his life. The middle-aged man says he has been immobilized by a militia-like group of others the government seems unable to stop. I wanted to dispute the impression that there is insecurity in Laikibia. Despite such assurances, they are quiet mamas that with an election around the corner, things are likely to take a turn for the worse. Wildlife conservancies are staring at rising cases of poaching and killing of wildlife that has for years driven the economy of this county. For now, the fight pitting pastoralists against ranch owners and apprehensive community is far from over. The scramble for the savannah grasslands of Laikipia appears to have only just begun. Denson Sarigo, the lead, KTA News.
Katie and News senior investigative reporter Dennis Onsoigo with the lead. That is the basis of a big question tonight. We're asking, do you think the conflict in the Rift Valley in northern Kenya will escalate during the election period? Samson Kazongo says probably people will take advantage, saying there was already instability in that place. Uh, Michael Kwambo says on Twitter, the never-ending Kenyan resource tragedy continues. Sad, just sad. And Otiano Joseph said, Kenya Etri Konawenyo, the lead is that painful. The current government, what is it doing? And finally, one here from Yedo Wakone says, yes, if the government will not tackle the problem with immediate effect. Keep the tweets and texts coming. Many thanks for staying with us here on KTM Prime. When we return, we have more news for you. Don't go too far.